Okay, we looked at dependency charts in the previous video clip. And in those dependency charts, there was no lead or lag. As soon as the first task had finished, the second task can start. So at the top of this slide, I'm showing it as a Gantt bar. When task one finishes, task two can start. And on the bottom, I'm showing a dependency chart. When task one has finished, task two can start. There is no lead, there is no lag. In this example, there is a lag or a delay between the tasks. When task one finishes, we have to wait for some reason for a period of time before task two can start. There is a lag or a delay. In the Gantt chart, we just show this as a gap. In the dependency chart, we put a number onto the arrow. So when task one finishes, this is indicating we have to wait two days before task two can start. Now, it's a couple of examples of tasks that often have lags between them. Could be that task one is happening at a supplier and task two happens in-house and you have to transport between them. Could be that task one is building a foundation and you have to wait for the cement to dry before task two you can build the wall. It's a delay. Could be that you're doing some uh, IT equipment in task one and you want to run it overnight, make sure it works, make sure it doesn't uh, overheat before you do task two. So a lag is a delay. Now very often in the Gantt chart, it's shown as a gap. I would suggest you actually create a task that defines what that is. Concrete drying time. So give it a, a task name, put it on the work breakdown structure. Nobody does it, it's got no costs. Yeah. Transportation time, that might have costs. Somebody has to do that. But it is a delay between task one and task two. On the dependency chart, it's a positive number that says when task one finishes, we have to wait so many days before we do task two. The opposite of lag is lead. This is where actually we can start task two before task one has completely finished. So on the Gantt bars, on the top of that slide, task two is overlapping with task one by some period of time. And on the dependency chart, I've indicated it with a negative number. And this means that task two can start two days before task one finishes. Now, some examples of this. Um, if task one is producing some castings, that are machined in task two, we can start to machine the first casting before number five casting has been completed. Or an example that students, uh, I often witness with students, task one is the lecture, task two is pack up. And the students are putting their coats on and packing up before the end of the lecture. Or some of you might even be eating your lunches. So lead time is where there is an overlap between the tasks.